reforms in India have transformed it into one of the fastest growing economies in the world, which has resulted into substantial environmental impact in terms of water, air pollution and hazardous waste. These industries remain indifferent towards environmental problem which results in grave environmental problems and this is now posing a threat to their very survival. The economic survey of India in its study in 1998-1999 evaluated that the annual cost of environmental damage in India is around 14 billion dollars which is around 4.5% to 6% of the GDP. India relies mainly on the command and control CAC approach that sets emission or effluent standards to curb industrial pollution. The success in abating and controlling pollution in India has been inadequate because of poor monitoring and enforcement of environmental laws by the pollution control boards PCBs which is actually due to the slow reaction of courts in imposing actions sought by Central Pollution Control Board CPCBs and State Pollution Control Boards SPCBs. Financial restriction of the boards less penalties for non-conformity with the stated standards prevalent corruption and majority of small scale units that generally lack the technical financial and managerial capabilities to treat their emissions. The compliance level of small and medium sized enterprises SMEs is worse than those of large industrial units. The pollution control laws in India have neither kept speed with the changing constitutional directives nor have operationalized the scope for action. There is no coordination between the policy and laws which exist in India for pollution control, affecting the enforcement of regulations. Learning Outcomes After starting this module, you shall be able to know about legal instruments for controlling water pollution, know about economic instruments for controlling water pollution, know about command control regulation. First, we shall discuss the policy instruments for controlling water pollution. In order to control water pollution in India, various policy instruments are adopted which are explained as follows. First is legal instruments. Water quality standards in India particularly for drinking water are set by the Indian Council of Medical Research. These standards abide to WHO standards. On the other hand, the industrial effluent discharge is controlled by the Indian Standard Code. Recently, the water quality standards for coastal water marine outfalls have also been identified. In addition to the given general standards, also some specific standards have been established for emission discharges from industries like iron, steel, aluminium, paper, oil refineries, petrochemicals and thermal power plants. The legal acts to control this water pollution are as following. Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. It is represented as India's first attempt to systematically deal with environmental matters. This act forbids the discharge of pollutants into water bodies beyond a given standard and state penalties for non-compliance. The act was revised in 1988 to follow the provisions of the EPA 1986. It set up the CPCB Central Pollution Control Board which states the standards for the prevention and control of water pollution. At the state level, the SPCB's State Pollution Control Board works under the direction of the CPCB and the state government. Next is Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Cess Act 1977. This act provides for a levy and collection of a cess on water utilized by industries and local authorities. It targets at augmenting the resources of the central and state boards for prevention and control of water pollution. Following this act, the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution 
test rules were set up in 1978 for defining standards and indications for the kind of and location of meters that every consumer of water is required to install. Second is command and control regulation. The government's approach towards inhibition of pollution has been widely through legislation based command and control measures while natural resource management has been mainly carried out through programs supported by allocations from central and state budgets. Command and control regulation means the direct regulation of an industry or activity by legislation that states what is acceptable and what is prohibited. This approach is different from other regulatory methods, for example, the use of economic incentives in which the use of taxes and subsidies as incentives for compliance is included. The command is the depiction of quality standards targets by a government authority that must be confirmed with. The control part indicates the negative actions that may result from non-compliance. CAC for controlling water pollution incorporates a range of methods which includes affecting behavior through laws, incentives, threats, contracts and agreements. In this, there is an awareness of a problem and the solution for its control is established and consequently implemented. The use of command and control in regulation involves the government or similar body to command the reduction of pollution, that is setting emission levels of water pollution and to control the manner in which it is achieved that is by installing technologies which controls water pollution. CSE regulation has the perspective to lead to a more rapid resolution of certain environmental policy objectives. It may also provide clarity to those that are subject to the regulation. There may be a clearer understanding of what is required and how to meet those requirements. It has been argued that the use of the CAC approach to solve environmental problems can result in unexpected consequences if the application is conducted uncritically. Third is economic instruments. Economic instruments for water policies are tools based on incentives and disincentives. They transform conditions to enable economic transactions or reduce risk aiming at increasing environmental quality. The only method for sustainability of water in a world of ever increasing water demand and falling water availability and or reliability where water related hazards are on rise, where climate change threatens to undo decades of development works is a right mix of mutually building up policy instruments. In this policy mix, Economic Policy Instruments EPIs are best suited to promote an efficient allocation and use of water, reduce harmful exposure and impacts on the communities and environment, and protect natural capital. Economic Policy Instruments or Market-Based Instruments MBI are regulations that inspire behavior through market signals rather than through explicit directives. They are ways of correcting market signals in order to carry the cost of externalities to economic actors, individuals as well as firms which have generated them. About water policies, economic instruments include regulations like those making virtual market conditions, tradable permits, charges for public services, payments for ecosystem services and transfer payments such as incentives based on taxation levies, fees and loyalties and subsidies. They characterize an alternative to more traditional command and control instruments, whereas already introduced into climate policies, air quality and energy policies. Their application to water policies represents some specific challenges. In environmental policy, economic instruments have gained growing attention over the last decades and have been applied to attain environmental policy objectives such as climate policy under the form of emission trading. The following are some of the market based instruments for controlling water pollution in India. Water tariffs. 
charges for the use of water are among the best known economic tools for water policies. They can contribute to the transmission of market signals which are coherent with policy aims if their design is transparent and revenues are earmarked to uses connected to the service or to the mitigation of impacts from water uses. Charges for water uses potentially aim at different objectives. A. Redistribution the cost water service operators bear for water related services among the users cover cost for service provision. B. Distribute social cost of resource uses for instance environmental cost among users. C. Attribute water uses to the economically most efficient type of uses according to their ability to pay for water uses. Next is environmental taxes. Taxes on the use of water as an environmental good, for example, on the use of groundwater, can support in internalizing negative environmental consequences and or collect financial resources for the public budget. The earmarking of environmental taxes, making the use of the resources collected transparent and coherent to the environmental function of the tax is a central issue for the receipt of the tool. Next is environmental charges. Like environmental taxes, charges can transmit signals for internalizing negative environmental impacts and influence behavior and to collect financial resources that are allocated to support environmental friendly practices and projects. Next is tradable permits. As water is usually not a traded good, the establishment of specific rights or tradable permits are a means for using market mechanisms for the distribution of limited water resources. Creating virtual markets tradable permits for water uses can improve the allocation, increases the efficiency of resources to the economically most efficient uses. Virtual markets can be formed either with respect to quantities of water to be used, abstracted or levels of pollution conceded to potential polluters. Next is subsidies on products or practices. Direct or indirect subsidies of water uses aim typically at increasing the attractiveness of green products, production factors that have limited negative environmental impacts on water resources or produce positive environmental externalities. Next is compensation mechanism. Payments and charges on the deterioration of environmental goods can be substituted by mechanisms where environmental degradation leads to financial payment that is allocated to alternative actions to compensate for the degradation. Compensation can also be given by third parties for instance insurances. Next is payment for ecosystem services. Water bodies provide ecosystem services consisting of flood protection, biodiversity support and remediation. These functions are generally not considered as economic benefits although they are used as inputs for social activities. Introduction of payment schemes can potentially support the maintenance of natural functions of water bodies. Next, we shall discuss the policies in India to control water pollution. The following are some of the policies in India for the conservation of water bodies and to control water pollution. Guidelines for repair, renovation and restoration of water bodies with external assistance and domestic support, Ministry of Water Resources 2009. Guidelines for the National Lake Conservation Plan, Ministry of Environment and Forest 2008. Model Bill to regulate and control the development of groundwater, Ministry of Water Resources 1996. The Maharashtra Groundwater Regulation for Drinking Water Purposes Act, International Environmental Law Research Center, 1993. Maharashtra Act No. 18, Water Resources Department, 2005. National Water Mission National Action Plan on Climate Change, Volume 1st and 2nd, Ministry of Water Resources, 2009-2008. National Water Policy, Ministry of Water Resources, 2002. Policy on Rainwater Harvesting, Department of Water Resources, Government of Goa, 2008. Guidelines, 
rules for prevention and control of water pollution. The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Rules, Ministry of Environment and Forest, 1975. The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act, Ministry of Environment and Forest, 1974. The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Sex Act, Ministry of Environment and Forest, 1977. The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Sex Amendment Act, Ministry of Environment and Forest, 2003. Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Sex Rules, Ministry of Environment and Forest, 1978. Water Regulation and Control Acts, Policies, Guidelines. Andhra Pradesh Water Resources Regulatory Commission Act, Andhra Pradesh Water Reforms, 2009, Articles 246, 262, Ministry of Water Resources, Government of India, 2010, Entry 56 of List 1st and Entry 17 under List 2nd of 7th Schedule, Ministry of Water Resources, 2010, Institutional Arrangements, Ministry of Water Resources, 2010, Orissa Water Tariff Revision, the Orissa Gadget, Housing and Urban Development Department, 2005. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. India's pollution control policy has mostly relied on command and control based on a set of laws designed to perform a preventive rather than a proactive role. The presence of well-drafted legislations that specify standards for various pollutants and penalties for non-compliance have accomplished pollution reduction to some extent, but far from the required extent. Scattered informal units, meagre resources, limited authority of the regulators, political interference, low remuneration that provides an incentive for corruption. Asymmetric information aggravates the problem of pollution control in India, Kathuria, 2006. The CPCB and SPCBs need to be given the authority to impose penalties to ensure swifter enforcement of actions. A judicious mix of legal processes and sanctions duly complemented by administrative procedures is needed. The credibility of enforcement needs to be improved. Thank you.